Well, don't look now, but we got a special <laughs> guest, everybody. <laughs> May I introduce you to the Reverend? <laughs> the Reverend, the most holy Reverend. <laughs> reverend, that's that's what I go by now. <laughs> we've had just so people know, we've had some emails that have went through the staff that <laughs> make it sound like it's from me to them asking them to do things. Right. Some have fallen for it, but. Yeah. Right. Rewind four months ago. You there's somebody that that fell for it. So yeah. <laughs> but it re, it referred to me as Reverend Adam. So there's a giveaway right there. So if anyone out there gets an email from the Reverend Adams asking <laughs> you to like send him gift cards or wire him money because he's in need, and they say things like, "I can't call right now. I'm in deep prayer." <laughs> Just call him first. Yeah. Just call, call just him. Call yeah. Him first. <laughs> oh. Was it? It's never deep enough for you not to send the email though, so that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Good. 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 Yeah. yeah. Yourself? I'm good. Everybody's good. healthy. I'm healthy. Family's yeah. healthy. We're all good. Yeah. We're doing all right. We're doing pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, so just to let you in on this, we're in 1 John chapter 5. Um, Chris and I went a little bit into chapter 5, but I think we'll probably rewind a little bit into get, go back to verse 13, and we'll just finish out the book of 1 John. So, sound good? We'll try to. In mine, it says concluding. Oh, just verse concluding remarks. Is that like a pastor's conclusion, which means he's about 60% of the way through? <laughs> what? Second John and third John. <laughs> okay. oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to tell you one more thing. I already sent this out. I forgot to PS you as a, after I, before I sent it. So I'm going to rewrite this thing again. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, very good. I'll, uh, Go ahead and I'll start reading. And you guys want to hold, put a hold on it and start talking. Let's talk. All right. Good. All right. So here we go. First John chapter five, beginning in verse 13. I'm reading out of the New International Version. It reads this I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. Time out. Time out. <laughs> uh, I, I love the very first of 13. Just, you know, how many times have you talked to somebody and asked them, you know, are, are you going to heaven? And like, I hope so. I don't know. Right. I don't know. And yet, right here, he says um, that you may know, that you may know you have eternal life. Right. So we can know. Yeah. You don't have to question. Yeah. Can know. There really are some questions that you can't just leave unanswered. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's one of them. Yeah. I mean, that would be terrible to not know for sure whether you are or you aren't. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I can, I probably can recall at a point of not completely sure that the deal was, the, the deal was sealed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. I remember a point in my life when that was when it felt that way. But, um, you know, the more that you, more that you know him, the more confidence that it builds up in, in that decision and what the truth is and all of that. Yeah, well, we probably ought to give a little more and not just stop there because somebody's probably like, I'm still not sure. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Um, one one of the big things I think, and, and you have to remember, he's he's talking to believers here, um, and saying they can know. Um, I think one of the biggest problems people have is they base it on feelings. Mm -hmm. On our, you know, I <laughs> I feel saved today. I don't feel saved today. <laughs> you know, um, that that feeling. Of, of where we stand with God instead of facts. It's it's about the facts. 
which is, you know, he, before this, he talks about, you know, um, he talks about, um, you know, if you love me, you'll do my commands and, and those things where, you know, I mean, there, that word believe in there is so huge to me. I, I've always said many times that word believe means to totally depend upon. And that's, that's relational based on facts. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's good. That's good. So I, I don't, do you have anything else to help them if, to, to know? Help them to know. Well, well yeah, so the facts are. The here's wonder. Somebody, somebody out there I, I just know is. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I'm saved. I don't know. I don't know if I died right now, if I'd go to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, that's that's a, that's a good question as to because you what you were just mentioned is it, it all it has to do with that. Many times it does come down to our emotions in the matter. You know, it's it's we look at the circumstances around us and maybe the circumstances around us don't necessarily reflect the decision that we have made or that. Um, uh, that we have trusted Christ as our Lord, um, at least not yet. And so sometimes, depending on on your circumstances, depending on where you've come from, sometimes there's just a lot of junk that needs to get cleaned up out of your life before it begins to reflect what what has taken place. Right. So the idea of you can't you can't base it on those things that you see around you because sometimes it just takes time. Um, to get to that place where you can look around and go, yeah, yeah, things are good. Yeah, th that's, yeah, I can see the difference here. Right. So, uh, it, but, yeah, like, I guess. Yeah, time, yeah uh, go ahead. I said, sorry. But during that time, the change has already been made. Yeah. Uh, right. He right. who began a good work in you is able to complete it. So when it's begun, what is it? A good work. Right. He didn't say, he who began a good intended thing He's done it can be right you know um he who began a good work in you as long as you've acknowledged him and you truly believe and you're confessing to him what your sins are your life does not have to be pulled together for you to have your salvation secured right right i i'm really mad at myself right now and i'm kind of looking the concordance and i'm not finding it but what is the scripture saying you guys maybe can help me out if you believe unto the Lord Jesus Christ and that Jesus died on the cross, raised from the dead, you will be saved. Mm -hmm. I, that might be paraphrasing a little bit. Right. Are you, are so you, you confess with your, is it the confess with your mouth? Confess. The, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that that Jesus is. His Lord. Yeah. His Lord. Yeah. Something. <laughs> yeah. Wait, let me see. You guys keep talking. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Yeah. It bothered me. Yeah, yeah. You can't even repeat it. Right. So I think that the uh, we over we complicate things. The exchange is simple, right? The the, the exchange that, that this that takes place is very simple for what for for God to hand over this salvation, eternal life. That that transaction is very simple. He's made it very 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 simple. But we we in our complex nature we overcomplicate things. And we think, well, wait, is that really because we don't have necessarily the proof right in front of us? We struggle with that. But he does make it plain. Like, I mean, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son so that uh, whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And that's believing that totally dependent upon. Um, and that just takes time to find. I mean, it's there in that. That totally depending on it may start in just a very simple piece of your life. Yeah. It's just that it's just starts it has to start somewhere. Um, and the more and the more you trust, the more of your life is totally depending upon Christ. <laughs> so we'll do. Uh, uh, While well, you're still looking, if you're still going to continue to look. Yeah, go just keep going. <laughs> I'm really upset about this. Uh, so I don't even know if I did. I read 14. We'll just I'll just read it again. This is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know what that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. 
a little bit of a little bit of a tongue twister there. A little bit of a struggle to read through that. <laughs> well, a big, big thing you got to understand, you got to remember, is according to His will. Yeah, yeah. Big words out there. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think um, I may have said this yesterday because we were kind of rereading a little bit of what we talked about yesterday, but just that idea that when we have when we have done this when so that you may know that you have eternal life you've put yourself in that place to have that confidence that when you do approach him when you do you go and you begin to ask um of anything according to his will that becomes pretty apparent with you the more the more that you trust with your life you trust him with your life because you're going to want it to line up with what his will is anyway so um yeah so yeah all right, I'm gonna move on then. Just a second. Oh, 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 oh he might have found tell, it. Tell a tell a joke or something. Tell a joke. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not that good at telling jokes now. No. <laughs> right off the not off the cuff. <laughs> off the cuff. All right, um, well, we're almost there. So, right. I, I, so I think the importance of that this portion of it right here is the idea of understanding that. That we can't have the confidence. So the only way we can have confidence of that it is lining up with his will is that we know him. We know what his will is. Um, and sometimes we overcomplicate that too, right? Like his understanding of what his will is in our life. Um, I think God gives us a lot of uh, a lot of freedom in in what and how we go about things. I mean, just even thinking about Jesus's the the great commission where he says therefore go and make disciples he didn't say now you got to do it this way and you got to do it this way he yeah. says go just therefore go go and make disciples go and do that you see you've been a part of it with me just just go and do it <laughs> and so he gives you a little bit of that freedom so when we begin to we we begin to try to really i think narrow focus god's will in our life so so very specific to things that it leads us in this place of like, oh, I don't know if I'm doing God's will in all of this. It's like, well, are you loving? Are you loving God? Are you loving people? Guess what? You're you're in His will. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're doing it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I, I was talking to a guy earlier, and and he's struggling with a gentleman who has done a lot of bad things and hurt mm -hmm. people. And he's like, man, is it normal for me to really struggle for praying for this guy? Mm -hmm. And I said, that's no, not that it's not normal to be struggling with that but we need to i mean it we still need to. that that is an example that's the will of god it isn't the will of god that we would pray for that guy mm -hmm. so are you ready i've got it yeah let's get oh man i can't wait i can't wait <laughs> this is gonna be good everybody is on the edge of their seats right now in. all right here we go already romans 10 9 and i it makes me so mad i should have known this if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Right there it is. That's that's how you get saved. Yeah. You confess. I mean, there's a scripture that says that if we deny him before, if we deny him before others, he'll deny us before God. Oh my word. <laughs> but we need to confess with our mouths, and then that Jesus is Lord, and then we believe. Believe in our heart. That he, God raised him from the dead, then we'll be saved. So, so you know, it's not it's not all these other things that sometimes that even Christians put on others that you've got to do these certain things, you know, to to be saved. So, all right, I feel better now. Oh, good, good. <laughs> there we go. The burden has been has been lifted. Oh, that just drove me nuts when I can't remember. <laughs> it's getting worse. <laughs> all right, so. Here we go. We're going to we're going to get into verse 16. So this is where it starts to get starts to get a little interesting. So we'll go ahead and read and I'll read a little bit and we'll stop and talk a little bit. All right. So verse 16, if anyone sees his brother come commit a sin that does not lead to death, he should pray and God will give him life. I refer to the I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I am not saying that he should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. So. I didn't tell you to stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can 
<laughs> I know the wheels have been turning in my head, and I can hear. Uh, I'll say I can hear the wheels turning in others' heads at this point as well, because that that is a. What in the world does that mean? Well, there's a the reason we brought a youth pastor on here today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No just as I was getting to say something, now there's no pressure. But there are two veins of thought on that. One of them is you're literally talking about murder, okay? Somebody who is sinning and causing people to die, right? Literal um, death. And then there is the sins that are like a part of your lifestyle and are part of – you have no regrets, and no, no inhibitions about them, and they are ultimately – Without because you don't repent of them, they will lead to your eternal death. Mm-hmm. And so, I it's hard to say if this is only referring to one or the other, but it is definitely true that there are people out there that are sinning and not repented about it, and it will lead to their eternal death. Um, by contrast, there are sins that are sins of opportunity and sins of um, the moment, right? Then a person I mentioned this not that long ago on here that a person like does not embrace them as part of their lifestyle and they, and they repent of them when they recognize them. And so this is a call to action more than let's pick apart the value of each sin. It's a call to action because here my version says, I got to find it. Okay. If this sin does not lead to death, you should pray. Mm-hmm. So we have a role in the next part that happens, okay? Right. You should pray, and God will give that person life. Right. Do you right. See, our prayer literally pr- plays a role in a person who is doing something that's sinful. We re- react and respond in obedience. God gives that person life. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think if you look— especially when you look at this entire the entirety of this letter and the letter that he's writing i mean it's so much of it is about just loving god and loving others and um that in itself right there you should pray like that is that is an act of love that is an absolute act of love that you should pray mm-hmm. that pray for someone that that and what he's saying is that that's really what what i feel like he's saying in that moment is that that's the first thing you should do not I need to go confront that person right now and condemn them for what they're doing and and then bring my whole posse with them. I need to pray for them in that moment. Right then and there, I need to pray for them. And that that's that first act of love. So yeah, that's good. Well, it as Levi said, it's the big debate even in commentaries, whether that's physical or spiritual. Right. So I me personally, I think it's spiritual. I think, I mean, that's that's what he's talking about here. Um, you know, I know if somebody's going to bring up the impartable sin, you know, blasphemy, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, right. you know, which is basically just totally denying God. You know, mm-hmm. people say to me, I'm worried that I did that. And I'm like, then you didn't do it. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. I like that answer. Yeah. <clears throat> that's you heard you did, you didn't. So... Yeah, yeah. So, but, you know, it, it, even Romans, it talks about sin is death. And, yeah. and it's, it's that, it, it, again, he's not referring to physical. It's, it's the spiritual side that, I mean, there's, there's a scripture that says that our, our conscience is being sheared. It's being dulled when we're, when we're in sin. And it just, you know, how when there's an area that you don't repent from and you keep doing it, keep doing it, and keep doing it pretty soon, uh, you don't feel, you don't feel that guilt or you don't feel you know where you need to turn from it it just becomes where you've accepted to become a part of you and it just begins to whittle away your spiritual life or even defend that behavior right or in another part of the bible uh, it seems right to us it's like the right thing to do yeah Yeah. Yeah, i mean we're 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 never going to be sinless that's just not going to happen so um, but we'll sin less and less, and I, I think the more the more we know Him, the more we love Him, it just becomes less and less and less. Yeah, that's right. Doesn't mean temptation stops though. <laughs> no, nope, doesn't. Does not. It's just not as strong, maybe. Yeah. 
right or it's easier to to maybe a little bit easier to deter sure all right ready to move can move on good mm -hmm. good to hear that <laughs> verse 18 we know that anyone born of god does not continue to sin the one who is born of god keeps him safe and the evil one cannot harm him we know that we are children of god and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one we know that also that the son of god has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true even in his son jesus christ he is the true god and eternal life dear children keep yourselves from idols so i feel like i read a whole bunch in there yeah. and i didn't want to stop so <laughs> <laughs> Something that jumps out at me, though, and, and listen to you read that, Nate. You know, listen back to what we talked to about at the very beginning. Listen to what he says. How, and, and maybe I didn't count them all. Verse 18, we know. 19, we know. 20, we know. Uh, later in 20, we may know. And it's he's just saying, listen, this is, this is about knowing. It's the confidence yeah. that we can have in our relationship with him. And, right. and I love that because I, I think the more that people get that and build that 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 trust in him and that confidence, I, I just think it just it just takes your relationship over the over the over the hill. Yeah. So I, I love that. We know, we know, we know. So Right, I mean, and the only way you know is by by trust like trusting him in your life and allowing allowing yourself to walk out into whatever, you know, into the world and Put yourself in position where you have to trust him. Where you you literally have to put trust in him to uh, for you to begin to see that, so that you can truly know. Because until you've experienced it, you don't really know, do you? <laughs> you know what I mean. So uh, that's that's the important part of it. Is everything that he's everything that he's been talking about is is putting into motion, putting into motion what you what you may believe. But then getting it to the point where it is like this absolute is just a knowledge of of this is what's really is the truth. Yeah, and then one that I missed that's a little bit different. It says that the Son of God come and have has given us understanding. And that kind of goes right in with those uh, we know. It's, it's an understanding. Mm -hmm. I, I love verse 19. We know that we are children of God. I mean, that, just that acceptance and you know the bible talks about adoption sonship mm -hmm. you know that uh, that he is he has adopted us that's, that's that's powerful so while he's given us all these things that we know we're his children we know that he takes away our desire and our drive to sin he holds us securely he still ends with saying now dear children <laughs> Keep away from anything that might take God's place in your hearts. Yeah. Because it's not as simple as, oh, God, you know, I know that I'm God's child. Click. Now my priorities are always right, and I am a <laughs> fully committed and amazing Christian always. Right. We still need the prodding and the and the discipline of saying, okay, is, if, is there something that's going to take this all away from me and distract me from living this life where – I know I'm secure. I mean, we deal with anxiety and, and you know, not and not being sure of the future. But it's because we're t we're 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 letting other things take place in our hearts. Yeah. 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 What a what a way to end that though, dear children, keep yourselves from idols. <laughs> you know, I, I read. I I, I do want to because I read something. I just I feel like whenever I can read something about that Charles Spurgeon had to say about something, I feel like I should I should read it um, because he he didn't he did a uh, uh, um, he did a message a sermon on this uh, just that idea of little children in in chapter five there um, and he's talking about what that children means when he's writing that to these people the believers that he's writing to he, he's saying that this is a title of deep affection. It's uh, it means that there's a relation to to those people that there's humility in being a ch being a children. It's indicates that there's teachableness and faith 
that there it, it implies that there's also weakness in those individuals. So that idea of keep yourselves away from those idols, um, but that idea that those are all there. It's that piece that people wouldn't be like um, offended by that they shouldn't be offended by this this phrasing of dear children. Like it's this is known just what you were talking about, Levi. Is this this idea that we're not to that point of full maturity that we are still children and uh, that these things and the, so plainly that he puts it these things are obvious right they should be obvious to you that these are idols that these are things that will take you from your relationship with the lord that will take precedence in your life um because he doesn't go off and like list all of these things like just keep yourselves from idols right. okay <laughs> well i i think of that i people People sometimes, I think, they don't understand the nature of God. Mm -hmm. So they hear stuff like that or, or the commandment that says, thou shall not have any other gods before you. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's like it's like they hear it as thou shall not, meaning mm -hmm. like you better not, you know. And yet, yet, if you know the the uh, the nature of God, he's saying, uh, you know, don't don't do that because it's going to hinder our relationship. It's going to yeah. cause you to go farther away. Sure. And so I, I think you just, again, that's knowing you're a child, knowing these things uh, that he, for your concern, he's going, don't, you know, stay away from idols. Don't, don't go there for your own, for your own good. Not a, you know, my two year old uh, is, has her own little balance bike. She, she do, it doesn't have pedals. She can just scoot along. And I tell you what, if she is going along the sidewalk and then shoots off is, and in the middle of the road, I, it, I can be as calm as can be, but I need her to know how incredibly destructive and terrible and dangerous right at age two. So my reaction is not going to be, now, sweetie. We <laughs> <laughs> and so in a lot of ways, when God is saying, listen, don't, I, well, I'm just going to save you a lot of grief. I'm going to yeah. save you a lot of. I mean, man, because there really is nothing worse than being separated from God. And so many people choose that, you know, like today, like yeah. living in that separation from God, trying to figure out their way through the earth. And I I, I would kind of want like, you know, somewhere along the line, my dad made a big deal about me riding my bike in the road when I wasn't ready or, you know, yeah. for those teachable moments that were just actually the biggest thing, the biggest act of love you could do. Yeah. So you didn't stand there with your arms crossed and go, thou shall not. <laughs> That's exactly how I did it. <laughs> and she cried and, and left the bike there and ran into the house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I tell you, there's a lot in First John, isn't there? Yes, there is. It's packed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he should have just written another one, like another letter. Like, maybe, maybe two more. I, I don't think he can get it all in one. Or even two, so he probably needs to do a third one just to make sure he finishes his thought. Although they are very short, so they're really all <laughs> shorter. That's two. The next two really are pretty short. Yeah. yeah. If you ever want to like uh, impress somebody, read Third John and say like, "Yeah, I woke up this morning, had my coffee, read an entire book of the Bible," <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll say, "Was it Second John or Third John?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because here's, here we go. This gives you a visual. There's Third John. <laughs> a whole lot. A whole book of the Bible. So, whole thing. Yeah. Well, excellent. We should, uh, we should go ahead and pray. All yeah. Right. Well, it's good right. to be back on. Yeah, so I think you should pray. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I just forget how. <laughs> I'll pray first. <laughs> there you go. Levi. I, I read, so I'll let you go ahead yeah, and pray. Okay. pray that sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. there you go. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. And Lord, I just thank you for the confirmation that we have, that we are your children. And the confirmation that we have and we can have, that we have eternity. And so, Lord, I, I just pray for those out there that struggle with their relationship and they're struggling um, with whether, whether or not they would go to heaven. And Lord, I just pray for them today that they would know. That Father, their relationship with you, even 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 struggling with that, may give an indication of where they're at, Lord. That they they do care and they do love you. So, Lord, I just pray today for those who 
who struggle with that, that today you would give them confidence that, uh, that they, they can know, they can know where they stand with you and that you, they are a child of God. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you that you uh, have uh, adopted us into sonship, that, Father, you have uh, sent, the, sent the Son to die for our sins so that we can uh, ha- have the righteousness of Christ. So, Father, thank you for that. And, uh, Lord, we, we are uh, honored to be your children, and we thank you for it. And God, I just I just lift up this this world to you. And God, not that I'm, I would ever have a prayer big enough, but you have an ear big enough to listen to any prayer that we would give. And God, I I just I pray that there would just be a movement here. That people on the staff stop calling me. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I th- I did put it on Do Not Disturb. But we must have gone. Well, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> Father God, thank you that you are forgiving and loving and long suffering God. <laughs> but God, we need that. We need that long suffering. We need that hope. And God, we ask for that hope. Help us to see the hope that is around us, mm-hmm. instead of living and focusing on and talking about the despair that is around us. God, help us to, to literally find where that hope is. And that's in you, in, in your word. Help, thank you, God, that we continue to find that hope. And that's in you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> I right. thought that was me. I thought, oh, I don't know how to shut that off. <laughs> I, 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 I turned my notifications off. And then Jordan, okay, and Chris, both of you, I'm calling you out. <laughs> Go on, go. I'm going to tag them in this. <laughs> All right. So I think that we're good, right? Hey, if you get a chance, go on my Facebook page. And I posted a, I had seen it on there, uh, a message from Billy Graham that's amazing. Mm. He's just talking about the world and how basically God's still in control. Mm. Uh, but it's it's pretty cool, you know, in a way that only Billy Graham can. Yeah. yeah. I love to hear his voice. Good. Go. All right, guys. Oh well, yeah. Have good a happy, have a happy Wednesday. Take care, everybody. Buddy, have a good day.